Hello everyone. I'm recording this on New Year's Eve 2015. Uh, so, Happy New Year everyone. Um, it'll probably be New Year's Day or later by the time I get it edited and uploaded. Uh, so I'm not going to go on about the new year and all of that stuff. That's That's been done to death. And quite frankly, I don't have anything to add to it. Instead, I'm going to talk about a, a, a topic that is kind of important to me. It's the notion that everybody can program. And I, I really don't think that's the case. Now, to explain that, I need to go into some detail on just what I mean by programming. Well, let's start at the bottom rung of everything. I'm going to call that coding. That's basically you're translating some instructions that need to happen into uh, something a computer can do. This is the type of process where you're, you're taking tools that you have, stuffing them together, uh, shoving it at a compiler or the like, and it does some particular task. It's filling in the blanks in, in a boilerplate um, class definition. It's fleshing out the basic algorithm and filling in the details so that things actually happen. That's coding. That's, that's the bulk of what needs to be done to make a non-trivial program. Okay, so, so coding is important. Don't get me wrong. Coding is important. It has to be done to get any non-trivial program functioning. But one level above that is the guy that actually understands why mixing and matching all these things actually works. This is the programmer. This is the guy with the vision to figure out how to make something happen. This is the guy that works out uh, which algorithms to use. This is the guy that understands what the algorithms do, the, what the algorithms are good for, uh, the strengths and weaknesses of the various methods of doing things, selects the things to do, and then gets the pro project rolling. Now, on a lot of projects, the programmer and the coder are the same person. Uh, any decent programmer can code. It's necessary if you're working solo on a project. But it's not true that any competent coder can program. That does not follow. Programming requires a certain method of thinking, a certain creativity to f f solve the problem at hand and get a functional result. You can tell you're watching a coder trying to program when you see what's basically cut and paste programming. They search around in Google for some snippet of code that does approximately what they want, they shove it in their system, and then they tinker it randomly until it works. That's basically your coder trying to write a program. Now, I'm probably going to get lynched for saying that, uh, but most coders, that's about the extent of what they can do in the general case. Now, in a less general case, like just like in everything else, just because you're a coder doesn't mean you don't have some competency in programming in some field. Just putting the stuff together enough times, eventually you're going to learn something by accident, the worst case. Uh, so the more experience you have as a coder, the more likely you will gain some competency as a programmer. However, no amount of coding experience or coding skill will give you the tools to think about the raw problem and figure out how to get from the problem to a program that solves it. Okay. So my assertion is that programming requires some level of creativity. 
and some level of overall understanding of the problems. Now, you might be thinking, well, why can't, why can't someone be taught that? Well, you can learn to understand overall uh, problems and so on, but that it still requires a certain ability to think. And, a, and creativity cannot be taught. You're either creative or you're not. Uh, that's basically creativity in a nutshell. You're either creative or you aren't. So, you know, if, if being creative was learnable, then there'd be a lot more artists and so on out there. Well, no, that's not really true. Uh, art's a bad example because artists, well, they have to live, they have to eat. So, you know, you have to have some means of supporting yourself. Um, I, I guess let's compare it to, to the art world. Anybody can learn to draw competently given enough investment of time and energy, assuming the physical capability of drawing. Okay, so like if you can't hold your hand steady, you're not going to be able to draw particularly well. You know, that's a physical limitation. But barring physical limitations, with sufficient uh, effort and study, anybody with reasonable intelligence can learn to draw. And a lot of people with less than reasonable intelligence also can. Uh, but basically, it's it's a skill that you can that can be learned. Just like anybody can, barring complicating factors, can learn to drive a car or learn to read and write. You know, these things are learned skills. But not everybody can look at a scene and embellish it into a masterpiece, a, a work of art. That requires a certain imagination. And that's not something that can be taught. You either have the imagination or you don't. So coding, going back to the topic, coding is a skill. That, that is, you're, you're taking something that, a, a description of, the, of what you need to do and turning it into instructions for a computer. That's coding. And that is a skill that can be learned by putting in enough hours and effort. And, and it's not really particularly problematic to learn. But finding the path to go from the problem that needs to be solved to what to tell the computer to do to solve it, that requires the imagination, the creativity. Now, I'm not talking about creativity as in making up something out of thin air, you know, fictional stuff, uh, like writing a novel. No, it, it, it's a, a, a creativity where you can actually see a way uh, through the situation. Um, in fact, I think that our ability to do that creative thinking uh, is uh, one of the reasons humans have uh, survived as well as we have over the millennia. Uh, now, you might be thinking, why can't then uh, an artist who's clearly a creative person, why can't that artist pick up programming and do well at that? Well, maybe he can. Maybe he can. It's, maybe it's just a lack of interest. Uh, but there's different types of creativity, different types of thinking. Uh, and computer programming requires a certain type of precision of thought connected with a certain fuzziness of thought, 
which sounds paradoxical, but you need to have that precision of thought to come up with a program that's going to work. But you also have to be fuzzy enough that you don't get completely mired down in formulaic results. Like, uh, and this is where teaching programming has been going wrong uh, lately in the educational institutions. It, it focuses on paradigms and programming by rote, I guess you could call it, uh, where the students are given recipes for how things can be done and turned loose on a problem. The problem with that is most recipes, yeah, they're great for the thing that they are designed for. A recipe works well when you have the ingredients that the recipe demands. And the result that you want is what the recipe produces. But what do you do when the ingredients you have are slightly different? but you need the same result? Or what if you have the same ingredients, but you need a slightly different result? Well, now what do you do? This is where the creativity aspect comes in. Uh, personally, as a programmer, I've encountered many, many situations where I have a, situ uh, you know, a, a set of conditions that I need to turn into a result, and that result is very similar to another set result I, I dealt with previously, or the conditions coming in are very similar. And I could see easily that a particular recipe was almost what I needed, and then I could turn, tune that recipe to give me what I needed. This is the sort of thing that a coder struggles with, and that's where you get the random copy-paste tinkering. Now, I have seen, in many cases, on code that I've had to pick up after the fact and maintain, I've seen the evidence of the coder trying to be the programmer. And that type of code is absolutely dreadful. If you wonder where all these security problems in software and other devices comes from, I mean, where it all comes from, if you wonder about that, it's largely from coders trying to program. Now, sure, some of it is garden variety errors that anybody makes. Uh, you know, so uh, let's let's be clear: it's not always the fault of the uh, people that made that that are making the software not having proper people to write the programs. But most of the time. It's a case that the people writing the programs aren't really quite competent to do it. Uh, it's not necessarily their fault, but they're in a situation where they have to write a program and they don't really know what they're doing. So, if, 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 you, if some of this code that I've looked at is any indication, there are a lot of programmers out there, so-called programmers, that have no business using the title. At best, they're coders. Uh, some of the code I've had to untangle was clearly copy-paste, random, mutate until it works code. And it's not efficient, for one, and two, it's not maintainable, and three, it, it'll have weird corner cases and things like that where it breaks. And then the next guy along copy-paste something on top of that to fix that. And next thing you know, you've got stacks and stacks and stacks and stacks of this, level by level by level. And by, by the time it needs to do anything, it has to run through 30 or 40 or 50 levels of code that's all protecting the, the level below it from a problem in, in that level. And... You know, and there is also why software is so slow on massively fast machines. And that's also why software is so big to do so little these days. So, 
back to my original point, uh, can anybody learn to program? No. There's a certain mode of thought that you need to have to do it well. Should everybody be taught to program? No. If you have no interest in learning it, you're not going to learn it. That's just people for you. And if you don't have the aptitude to do it, you don't have the mode of thought that allows you to, to do it, to do it well, you're either going to get frustrated and give up, or you're going to do it very poorly. On the other hand, should people be taught to code? Maybe. Uh, knowing how to code might give people a better idea how to run their computers, so they'll have less trouble when the computer puts up a message and asks them a question they don't understand. But again, if it's not something you have any interest in doing, you're not going to learn it. Or if you do, you're going to learn it badly. And the other problem with learning to code is what, what languages do you learn? What programming languages do you learn? Why? That's another distinction between the coder and the programmer. Programmers can usually, with a little bit of effort, pick up the details of a programming language that they haven't used before. Coders tend to have trouble with that because what they do is based on recipes and so on. And the recipes from one programming language often don't translate to another. So, you know, programmers tend to have more flexibility as well. And that comes from the creative precision of thought thing I was talking about before. So, no, we shouldn't be teaching everybody to program. And no, not everybody can learn to program effectively, which for the purpose of actually writing a program, you can't program effectively. You can't program. And, you know, we shouldn't be trying to force people into this notion uh, that they should be able to program their computer. If they're not interested in doing it, they're, they're just not going to do it. And actually, on a related topic, uh, this notion that uh, we should uh, that we have to balance the genders in the uh, IT field. That you know, unless it's a fifty-fifty split, that something's gone wrong is also ludicrous. For the same reason. Uh, sure, we shouldn't be putting up artificial barriers uh, for women or men to get into uh, you know, programming or coding or network administration or any of those fields. But we shouldn't be forcing them in that direction either, especially if they don't want to go there. So, hey, this, this, it's, it's the same thing. If you don't want to learn it, you're not going to. And if you don't have the aptitude, you're not going to learn it well if you learn it at all. Um, now, I should be clear, aptitude here means the create, creativity, the, the necessary correct mode of thinking, the creativity. Um, it's, and I should also be clear that it's not a black and white thing. Uh, the, there, there's no black and white cutoff like, where on this side you can... Uh, you have the, the right thought processes to do it, and this side you don't. It's a continuum. And that, you know, you can be a brilliant programmer and suck at a particular kind of programming. And you can be a lousy programmer but be a genius at a particular kind. So let's be clear, it's not a cut and dried thing. But talking about it in generality, general, generalities generalities, nice, gen, gen, uh, talking about it in general, uh, not everybody can program, not everybody should learn to program, but if you want to learn, go for it, I'm all for that, if you want to try it, go for it, 
The worst that can happen is you'll be lousy at it and you can go and learn something else. But maybe it pays off. So if you want to try it, go for it. Uh, odds are, if you want to try it, you'll probably do reasonably well at it. Uh, if you don't want to try it, you won't do well at it. So there you go. Anyway, that's my rant on the uh, subject for this time around. Uh, so happy 2016, everybody. Thanks for watching.